Hi there, my name is Cuppy Kate, and welcome back to Wolf Quest The Lost Brother with Teo. So, this will be our last day with Teo in his first litter, which is. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I can't believe we have made it this far with him, and it has been a struggle back and forth between the good and the bad. He's had some bad luck, but he's also persevered through all of that. Sometimes getting into a fit of rage, but Sundance has really shown us her passion for Teo and for this family, even just in the last episode where she took on a bear to the point where she was below half health. I think she's, yeah, she has 43% health and she has a minor jaw injury. And he saw her do that. He saw her fight for her family. And that has to be inspiring. So now Teo is going to lay down with his pups. And while he does that, I'm going to go ahead and roll for today's difficulty. Oh my gosh. It looks like the goddesses have seen Teo and Sundance, their passion and their faith and in their family. And they are going to have another blessed day with Easy. Well, we're going to call the pups out and let them enjoy some of this fawn that's left. And then maybe do a little bit of play. Moon Dancer, is he still recovering? No, he is fully recovered from his sickness. That's excellent. Earthum is doing really well. Seraphine is rolling with her dad right now. She is such a daddy's girl. And he loves every second of it. I also feel as though Teo through this, especially with having to carry Moon Dancer as far as he did when he was sick, has grown closer to his other pups that are still alive. Even though Seraphine has been his favorite for a long time, he is developing a closeness to all of his pups and perhaps doesn't have a favorite anymore and simply loves them all equally. Ah, yes, and there's Earthum staring off into the distance. He's extremely pensive for a pup, always looking off and pondering. I do think, as some of you have suggested, I agree with you. I want Earthum to have a closeness to Eartha, which is why he's always off staring off into the trees and into the grass and the flowers, that he has that connection and it makes him distant, not because he's lonely, but because... He's comforted by the goddess's grace. All right, so now that they've eaten, how's our affinity? Let's do some howling to raise that even more. Oh, Sundance is just being so loving this morning. We're going to give her a little bit of a kiss. Check on her jaw. We're kissing her jaw that's injured. <laughs> she seemed to like that. And our affinity is a little better. So we'll go ahead and wolf them into the grass. And we still need to go and take territory and time is running out. Sundance is telling Teo, we're getting close to needing to leave. So anything else you need to do here, do it quickly. Hopefully she will stay with the pup. She may not, it already looks like she's gonna follow us. We'll see. Is she gonna stay? Okay, it looks like she's gonna stay, which is good. We want her to heal and we don't want to put her in any situations where she could potentially get worse. I know for sure Teo would comfort her in saying, it's all right, I can do this. You rest, feel better, the journey will be long, and I want you to be in tip-top shape while we're moving to Towerfall. Because eventually, when Towerfall comes out, that is exactly what we're going to be doing, and I'm so excited for the release of that. I still don't know anything about when it's going to come out. I certainly don't want to rush the developers because perfection takes time. <laughs> Ooh, I see Moose Calf. We are going to ignore it. We are very busy today taking territory. So last time we were extremely hesitant to take on this hex, the 89% hex with Junction Butte because we knew they were in there and Teo's thought process for that was, it sounds like there's a lot of them and if they turn on me, it could be deadly. But he is going to be brave 
since Junction Butte and Prospect Peak have kind of been battling it out right now. He's going to be brave and try and sneak in there and see if he can't make a difference. And he might get into some trouble if he does. We'll probably see if we can't get out of it without fighting too much. But I could still see Teo fighting off a wolf saying, listen, like I'm imploring you to listen and only fighting them to get them to stop long enough for them to listen. Which, in gameplay, they will just run away. And that may be a wolf's choice, is to run away. But I don't think, at this point, Teo would take chase and make a point by killing a wolf. He's in a much better place right now, especially after seeing the bravery of Sundance the other night. All right, we were able to take the spot without any interruptions, without getting attacked. It seems like for story purposes, the wolves were willing to listen. As opposed to fighting, they decided to give Teo the chance to explain and they listened. So this is, this is great for sweet Teo. I'm thinking he's gonna try now and be brave to take this Prospect Peak spot since it's adjacent to see if they won't listen as well and possibly stop a potential battle or war between Junction Butte and Prospect Peak, which had been going on. So maybe this is his chance to not only convert these wolves into a peaceful faith, but to possibly keep them from killing each other. That was a very easy take of a hex. Perhaps Teo is learning that wolves don't truly want to always be at war with each other. I do think, just like there are people out there that have strong opinions on things, there will always be wolves that do want war. They want it for their own reasons, for vengeance, to prove themselves, to take over more and have more power because power is all corrupting. So perhaps there will still be those wolves, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, <laughs> but Teo is pushing for a more peaceful path for everyone. Phew, we are taking this hex and it was quite a climb to get up here. Junction Butte does not have it easy with how many hills, really steep hills that they have. This is probably not really the best place for them, but Teo is exhausted climbing and sliding and climbing and sliding down these hills, but he is still pushing forward. He is exhausted though. I don't know that he's going to be able to take the rest of the hexes, but the point was getting 75% and I think we have more than done that. Wow. Look at that view of Yellowstone. I imagine that Teo feels like he is on top of the world right now. He is looking down into the gravel fan, which has bad memories, but he can also see where he had left Sundance. And I think he feels hope and almost a little bit of sorrow in having to leave this place soon because this is where in some ways he's found himself. And with the taking of those last two hexes, Teo is exhausted, he's panting, he's tired. If he didn't want to immediately get back to his babies, he would just drop right here and pass out. But he wants to get back to them because he knows tomorrow is moving day. And if he doesn't show up, Sundance may worry. So he is pushing past his absolute exhaustion to get home to his family to have one last night in Slough Creek. And we are back with our babies, finally. They have practically passed out. And now that Teo is here, he is going to pass out. Moon Dancer, don't leave! We're so close, Moon Dancer! <laughs> oh, this is gonna be it, guys. This is officially where Teo's first litter is completed. And there it is! They're all 20 pounds and very hungry, but we did it! Teo finished his first litter. He did lose two pups. He lost Stardust and Bastion. He struggled between rage and peace. And I think that peace won out. If we look at our map here, 
you can see we've taken so many spots from Junction Butte. We have more than exceeded what was expected, which was to do 75%. This is definitely more than 75%. He was even able to come in and take a few hexes from other uh, packs, and I'll have to look, look back and calculate those, but I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was a couple. He had a few here and there that he took from other packs, but mostly it was Junction Butte that he was able to convert into the Peaceful Faith and a United pack, which is amazing. <laughs> and now we can look and see our healthy three pups, Moon Dancer being our biggest boy at 21 pounds, Seraphine at 20.6, Earthum at 20.1. Earthum was our little one, which is amazing. And now we have the jump to next year button, which is awesome. <laughs> So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm actually going to save and we're going to look at our pups before we jump into the next year. So I already saved. I am really tempted though. I want to see what this looks like. I've never pressed this button before so I'm interested to see what happens when you hit this button. We're not going to go ahead and continue to the next litter because I want to see puppies today. Begin another year for your wolf and their mate carrying your current territory over. Yes. This is amazing. Oh my gosh. So we actually started at the rendezvous site. They just stuck us right here at the rendezvous site. Let's go ahead and look at this map. This is amazing. This is legitimately incredible. I love this. This fits our story so well, too. That Teo would come back and it wouldn't be that the packs have all revolted and turned against him. That Junction Butte is still with him in the faith of the United Pack. And so story purposes and gameplay purposes, this is amazing. And I cannot wait to go into the second litter. Oh my gosh, Sundance, you're already pregnant. Oh goodness. Okay, okay. Before I get too excited and just continue out of excitement, I'm now going to save this one as well, called On to the Next, and that is where we will be picking up next time. I think I may actually just jump right into Teo's next litter, although <laughs> I need to kind of nail down exactly what I want to do with our Saturdays and Sundays. Whew, so let's go check out these puppies! <laughs> Here is Teo, and now if we go into our family tree, you can see Sundance, who has truly been our golden shining light through all of this, and truly she is the only reason that Teo has made it into what I am now considering the neutral path. I would love to have him go into the peace path, but he did lose two pups, and so I would say if we had a scale where this being peace and this being war and neutral being straight in the middle, I would say he's probably closer to the peace side. He's closer to the peace side. So neutral leaning on peace, but that is all because of sweet Sundance. Oh my gosh, are we about to grow up these wolves? I'm going to have so many wolves right now. I have everybody's litter in here except for Seraph's because her pups are not going to play a part in our story at the moment. That doesn't mean never. No, I don't want to make him a Meyer wolf. Oh my gosh, no iron wolf, please. None of that. Oh my gosh. Seraphine looks exactly like her mother. Look at how beautiful this girl is. Wow, she's more bronze than she is golden colored, but she is absolutely stunning. She has turned out to be so regal in her appearance. I think she's got more of a greener look to her eyes, like a gray green in her eyes. Very sincere look to her, absolutely beautiful. Let's check out her howls. Oh, 
A uh, very long howl for the first one. <gasps> she is one of my favorite howls is her second howl. That is amazing. Our beautiful, beautiful Seraphine. Absolutely beautiful. We may change a few small details about her as we write her story. We do indeed need to give her the signature snaggle fang because Teo is still a snaggle fang wolf. And so all of the pups of any of the snaggle fangs are going to carry this trait. We're going to say it's a dominant trait and it appears almost every time. So sweet Seraphine is also going to have the little snaggle fang, but we need to write a story for her soon. Okay, on to the next. Oh my goodness, Moon Dancer, look at you! What a beautiful gray wolf you turned out to be with your dark amber eyes. Wow. Oh my gosh, let's let's check out his howls. Beautiful! Your white socks, buddy, are so cute. Aw, his second howl kind of sounds a little bit lonely. Oh my goodness, our adventurous boy has grown up. And he definitely looks like a rock. No wonder he would want to be around rocks. Talk about camouflage. He's like, I blend in. I blend in and you can't see me. I do think that we are going to incorporate that into his personality for sure, that he wants rock dens. Okay, sweet moon dance, we are going to look at your brother, Earthum. So Earthum did indeed have the rare white coat. I know this because this is typically what the rare white coat turns into, which is neat that Teo would have such a rare pup. So this... Right here is Earthum, and what I think is amazing about that is this coat looks extremely similar to Kiba. It's not the same coat, it looks extremely similar though. And so we could say that Earthum has taken a little bit of the genetics of his grandmother, Kiba. He's got a little more of a husky look to him than he does a wolf look. He's still more wolf than husky, but he took on that appearance just a little stronger. Oh, what a beautiful boy you are. He actually looks a lot like Storm, which is really neat because I think Storm was also a this colored coat. I think Storm was also the 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 white coated pup. All right, Boyo, let's check out your howls. Beautiful. Oh, sweet baby. Let's go ahead and give you the snaggle thing as well. So absolutely for Eartham, I would love for him to have a connection with Eartha specifically. There are three other goddesses that we could possibly have wolves have connections to, but because his name is Eartham and he always seems so distant and wondering what was going on in the world, almost like he was communicating while he was distant away from the rest of the pups, he was talking to somebody else. I like that idea that he's really connected to her. And so I'm going to incorporate that into his story, which means he will likely be an extremely peaceful wolf, never looking to go into battle um, unless it is to protect life. And Eartha does talk about that. She does talk about that they are the guardians of all life and that life has a balance, but she believed in a unified pack of all wolves. So he will never be violent against other wolves, but he is not afraid to protect his family from other living creatures that may have overstepped their bounds. So he's going to be the true, uh, a true guardian of life. Which I love that. I love the idea of Eartham being a guardian. I could see him standing on a rock, looking over everything, thinking this is mine to protect. Uh, I had a Simba thought for a second. <laughs> you guys, I love the Lion King. I can't help it. Anyways, those are our 
three beautiful pups that Teo and Sundance have given us to play with. And they will absolutely, every single one of them will play a part in what happens in our story. I will warn you guys, I have no idea if I'm going to just rush into Teo's next litter or if next week is going to be a wolf talk to kind of give me more time to get through some of the highlight videos or if it will be something else, but it will be wolf quest related always. I want to give y'all more wolf quest stuff because that's why you're here. I think the majority of our community is a wolf quest community, but with that, I leave you guys with sweet Teo and wondering how the story will play out in the future. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, give the like button a tickle and a poke. Subscribe to join our family if you haven't already and jingle the bell so you're notified of when we jump into the next litter or what we're doing on Wednesday next week, just in general. Also, feel free to join Discord and Twitch. I am active on Discord every day, and I try to go live on Twitch every single week. I love you guys. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next week with more Wolf Quest. Bye!